Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 video. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the top 10 mistakes you need to stop making in Dynasty mode. Now, before we get into the video, as always guys, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We are at 29K subscribers. Let's get to 30K, that'd be awesome. Give this video a big thumbs up. Can we get 500 likes in this video? You guys killed it with a thousand in the last one. And of course, comment down below anything else you have. This list can honestly be a thousand plus things. So make sure you do go ahead and comment down below any other mistakes that you think people are making or need to stop making or something that you've done yourself. And of course, guys, if you haven't already, make sure to check out Underdog. I'm wearing the merch right now. Underdog is having a generational run right now. They are killing it. They are the best place to play fantasy sports. It's, it's not even debatable. If you haven't already, go check them out. If you see above my head right now or on the screen, you should be seeing it. It's Picktober. Underdog always has a promo or some kind of incentive to be playing on there each and every day. It honestly is the best part of it outside of winning, of course. So make sure you use my code down below. My link and code will be in the description as well as the comments. If you sign up with my code, not only do you help support the channel and help you bring these videos to you guys every day, but you also get to have a ton of fun. You get up to $1,000 on your first deposit as well as a free pick, which is basically free money. So make sure you check it out. So I made this video, I think when the game first came out, maybe like a month or so ago, but a lot has changed. They've changed recruiting. They've updated a lot. If you haven't checked out my other videos, make sure to check them out after this. So the first big mistake you can be making is when you scout. You should not be scouting basically between weeks one and five. In this preseason week, when you are able to go ahead and scout and you have these points is basically when you want to assess your class. I see a lot of people mess around in this phase and kind of just spend points however they want and waste them. Do not do that. Really, I, I cannot stress this enough. Get a list before you scout anyone. Get a list. Okay, I need, I need, I need ends. I need edges. I need corners. I only need one running back. So then when you go through, and I see this all the time, people start like this and they're like, okay, let me go through running backs. They'll scout the first 10 they see and like, okay, I like two of them. Then by the time they get to their defense, they're out. And when you look back at your roster, you only actually needed one back. So you shouldn't have wasted so much scouting when you needed four cornerbacks, which means you probably got to scout about 20 of them. So all I can say is do not waste your scouting points. Now people say, what about mid season? Yes. You should look at scouting like this. This first initial scouting is going to be basically all the information you're going to rock with through about week five. Once you week three to five, when you start accruing and getting some recruits to come in and you start committing them or losing them, that's when you start to accrue extra points. And now you can start reassessing your scouting game and going through what I call as the second half stretch of the, of, of the, the season, right? So make sure you do that. Do not waste scouting points because basically every player you scout is another recruit you kind of can't get. If it takes you 30 points to scout a player and you scout four players, that's 120 points. That's basically almost two to three players you could have done on a full send or some kind of recruiting actions. So you're losing out on recruits. Do not do that. The next one is skipping the coordinator aspect of this game or not caring a lot about it. So I see a lot of people just when they do their sims, they sim through the season and kind of just hire coordinators quickly. Coordinator week might be, no joke, one of the most important weeks of Dynasty mode. Coordinators have really made it so much easier for me to play this game. Think about it this way. Your coordinator is essentially a head coach. So if you care so much about getting your coaching packages, you care so much about maximizing your points and you're asking me all these questions, right? What do I do with points? What do I do with my coaches? If you care that much about them, look at a coordinator. They have the exact same thing except for program builder and for CEO. They're essentially three head coaches. So why would you focus so much on just your head coach when you have coordinators? And the best part is you don't got to pay for them. So what I like is that when you take a current head coach, like my coach, I prefer though to actually double up. So for me, I like motivator and recruiter. There's some other stuff I want, but with coordinators, you can utilize them for two things. One, to double up. So what I love about this is, let's say this coordinator has elite recruiter and I get that what I love, the tier one and tier two elite recruiting packages. You get that on them and then you have it on your main coach. So you're actually getting a bonus because they do stack. And then if your D coordinator also has it, like you see here, if you were to get some more upgrade him, you will get a bigger stack as this guy does go up in prestige. That is so important. And the other aspect of it is if you do have the CEO package where you can discount stuff, you are able to go ahead and actually sign, get coordinators that have bundled packages that they have that they share and you can get discounted stuff on your main head coach. So there is ways to look at it, but coordinators honestly are a top three most important thing in this game. Stop overlooking them. Now with this next one, I know I sound like a broken record, but I'm getting so many comments about this. So I, I want to just touch on it again because we were think about it this way new players are still getting the game people are still learning some players are way ahead more than others right so it does come to a point where you got to kind of reiterate some information and this was going to be the hard sell the hard sell is the most important thing in this game outside of visits now by the way but hard sell is the most important thing i see people saying i prefer to send the the 50 the 50 send the house no hard sell hard sell hard sell once you can hard sell that's absolutely what you need to be doing so you don't want to be missing the early hard sell so when you go through you can utilize their deal breaker like i mentioned but if you go through here and you see they have two already as long as you can utilize their deal breaker you typically can guess and if not even in other cases you still can like i said even with this guy right here or this one so if we take a look here 
even though you only have two some people say oh i just soft sell here might be worthwhile doing if you don't have anything else but if you are able to guess their hard sell properly and when i say guess i mean like basically knowing that's what you should do so if we look on through process of elimination you should always be going through and figuring it out so it's clearly that one right and i always like to do one last double check to make sure i don't screw myself on the recruit i like to stare at the greens you can really just speed run through it this one right here is clear as day as the one so this is a way to hard sell in week two while everyone else is still sitting there like waiting to see always hard sell the moment you can with process elimination you could do it with one you could do it with two of course you could do it with three make sure you're doing that next one which kind of tails right off of this one is utilizing the deal breaker in more than one way so some people have told me i want to schedule a visit for my week two game but i don't have any greens unlocked if you look at your deal breaker your deal breaker will always be one of their key motivations and if you're lucky there it's one of your good grades right a smaller school maybe not but let's say right here from michigan i wanted to offer a visit and i didn't have anything else unlocked It'd be simple to just go ahead here and just go based off my deal breaker and you can go schedule this week for one but honestly where it's more useful is scheduling the visit right away so right in advance with how the with how the patch kind of works now you want the visit as soon as possible because if anyone else beats you to a week three through four you may never have a chance to win that recruit again so if you want to be able to schedule a week two or at least lock out a week three or four from someone else and do it right in advance and you don't have a green check yet to wait till week four to see what you have or week three i should say you're able to utilize your deal breaker and this applies in the transfer portal which i've been asked as well utilize your deal breaker there for an immediate visit utilize it for hard sales your deal breaker is so important and also un just understand what that means for your player because people also are losing players in the portal without understanding what they're recruiting the next one is stop spending your coaching points without a plan i see people do this all the time they'll they'll get five points real quick and go hmm this looks pretty interesting program builder or they have 12 points I should say earn additional xp okay that sounds cool i'll get that not realizing what that means or I'll upgrade this. Or sometimes in CEO, I see people do like the delay Sunday or, or like a second chance last second when they're about to lose a player to the NFL. 18 points is not worth saving a player last second unless you're gonna use this package for quite a while. Don't just buy things on a whim. What I do is in my main league, I have 27 points sitting there at level 50. I like to see the recruiting class that comes in. So right now I have 27 points with a few recruiting packages left to purchase. I like to wait until we sim to the next season. And when I get in there, I'll see, Oh, look, the best prospect, the, be the best class right now is the running back class. They have even an insane one coming in. Then I'll spend my points on running back. Oh, I already have points there. I'll save it to next season. I like to save it for things that are going to benefit me in the short term and the long term, which recruiting packages do. And as I learn how the game works, right? So do stop wasting your points without a plan. I like to do math. So right here, let's say this. I'm level 40. That means I get about 10 more levels worth of 10 points, right? So I get 100 total points left on this guy. So the beauty of this is I can now go ahead and say, okay, let's say I want to get an elite recruiter. I can go through and say, okay, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, so on and so forth. Go through and I can say, okay, I could complete all of this right here for 50 points. But wait, I don't really want to finish kicker or punter. So that's fine. I don't really care for that last tier four for some of them. So I cut back there. Okay, this guy actually cost me 35. So I can actually finish elite recruiter and you can start mapping out what you do. Oh wait, if I do elite recruiter and all of them, that's 32 per, I can only afford three full ones. So maybe I'll go tier one and two for these first six right here. And then maybe I'll do tier three here. And you can kind of map out what you're doing. Oh wait, that puts me over hundred. I don't have enough. So now I got to cut back somewhere. You want to plan for all these. So once you're 50 and once you're at a point, you're out. You don't want to be in a situation where it's like, oh my God, I forgot to do offensive line. I will never be able to create offensive line. Online league, you're screwed unless you start a new league. Offline league, you're screwed unless you start a new league. There's no way around it. So plan with your points do math pen and paper beforehand next thing stop wasting your points if you're under about level 30 and you're about to unlock ceo i'm gonna tell you why if you go to ceo and you look through right you read through all of these there's some pretty solid ones but bundle discount i think the math is somewhere around like level 35 ish if you're below 35 or below 40 ish and you are close to ceo stop spending points buy this and then play the coordinator game. Let's say you want an ability and none of your coordinators have it yet. It costs five. And then your coordinator has it, like let's say elite recruiter tier one, you can now buy it on your head coach for four points. Let's say your coordinator D and your O coordinator both have that same package. It now costs you three points. So why I say stop spending points, if you're close to CEO, if you're in an online league and you're level 40 and you're not really much of a competitive player, don't worry about it. If you're in an offline league and you're winning the first two seasons, definitely don't spend points. If you're in an online league, and you started a fresh coach and you won natty both the first two years or two out of three stop spending points buy this package because basically what typically you'd only be able to spend this amount with this package with any kind of bundle you'd be able to spend this amount 
and I made a video going over this in a cheesy way to do it offline, but this is the proper way to do it if you're actually trying to legitimately grind it. So make sure you buy you you hire coordinators that have packages that you want to unlock on your coach this is a way to slowly build up your coach with extra packages and reach like double their potential using this discount package so make sure you do get it and do not miss out on it the next thing is ignoring the red shirt now i know people are utilizing the red shirt but utilizing it the right way and making sure that you do focus on it you should really sit every season and go through and properly red shirt so after a lot of review of how dev trades work and everything else normal with the elite doesn't really matter in terms of whether or not you should redshirt them technically and what i mean by that is when you redshirt a player and they go up in overall it's not based on their dev trade it's based on your packages it's based on your motivator your tactician all those other things you have it's based on your packages like motivator architect etc talent developer you are going to upgrade based on those things and based on your stat caps and not your dev trade so when you're redshirting don't strictly say okay this guy's elite he needs to be redshirted this guy's normal he shouldn't be because that's not the case although it might be sometimes it's not the definitive case make sure you do go through and, and go through properly and understand who should be redshirted also understand that redshirting in almost every situation helps a player even if the player is elite dev like i said now that we know that that doesn't really correlate to it you're better off even redshirting an elite player giving them the extra boost and overall in that offseason and then next year starting their freshman season however you want to do it right where it's beneficial to stop not play a player and not redshirt them is when your team needs it for instance let's say garrett nussmeyer is a senior player and he's about to leave and we go into the next season and my new my new freshman quarterback comes in at like a 77 overall and he is elite dev and he has some decent stats i gotta start him i can't i can't start swan or hurley they're not good enough this other guy has speed he has throw power so sometimes you got to make the decision for your program and which is fine because you're going to recruit another quarterback you'll get someone else you can really focus on building for the full four or five years but where it's beneficial is in a situation where you need to start a starter and your your next guy up isn't good enough that is when i do it otherwise red shirting is so crucial and you should probably be red shirting about 98 percent, maybe 99 percent of all the prospects you bring in unless of course they have really bad stat caps and you don't care that's the only time where i'm like bad stat caps don't care i'll move them into the rotation right away but in most cases you could redshirt them all the next one is not starting guys with major stat caps a lot of people are so focused on dev traits a guy with an elite dev trait could have horrible stat caps and a guy with star or normal could have or impact could have really good open non stat caps and you're choosing the elite guy over them when that's not the case all that means is that they'll get to their potential quicker which could be really low this guy might take longer but he has more opportunity to grow so stop starting i don't like starting when i see a freshman or a redshirt freshman with bad stat caps I keep them basically as rotational players i'll move them in but i'm instantly looking for next year's upgrade so don't focus on building a player with major stat caps i can't stress this enough and you want to go through like i said filter by your freshman filter through and just look through them one at a time and get an idea for what you're looking at and what players are worth it okay 64 overall maybe this guy's okay and you look very quickly you realize he's pretty capped on pass rush he's not a great pass coverage guy he's more of a run stopping linebacker i suppose but let's say this was a pass rusher or a guy that you want to grow into a coverage backer he's pretty much cooked so stop trying to build guys that have bad stat caps. I see so many people saying, I had the highs and I had this. And I tell them, did you check their stat caps? And they're like, oh, I wasted three seasons getting three straight Heismans to not grow them. Don't bother. If a player for me, in my instant, in, I like to get personal stories all the time. I have this player called Terrell Church. That's his name in my main league. 95 speed, look like an absolute beast to replace Durham. Turns out his stat caps suck. So I'm not stat padding him. I have him in there as a rotational piece right now for one year. And I'm quickly replacing him because running backs position that you're going to be able to stat pad pretty easily and you can grow that player up to a 90 very quickly and i'm not going to waste all the stats and all this time and effort on a player that's going to cap it like an 83 overall so i'd rather just get him in there i'll focus my wide receivers that season and i'm trying to recruit another running back to bring in and that's a situation where i may not even redshirt the next running back i want them to start immediately because that's a position that grows so make sure you are focusing on stat caps always check these on every single recruit you bring in before assessing who's getting the red shirt before assessing who's going to start and then with redshirt freshman once the season's over to assess who actually plays i'll put in a safety with 89 speed and no stat caps versus safety with 96 speed with a ton of stat caps because at the end of the day he's going to be a capped out trash coverage super fast safety the other one could be a lockdown devin mccordy type 89 91 speed that's what i recommend the last two kind of go hand in hand but they're separate so the first one's going to be neglecting visits stop doing this so many people are institutionalized from the first month or so of cfb two months or so and they're saying now nah, i don't need visits i never needed them yeah that's fine the game has changed if you haven't seen my video that i just posted last week go watch it ea change recruiting visits are king now visits are key 
and honestly you want to hit them as soon as possible like i said the moment you advance into a week like where you get into top five what i like to do instantly at every advance is do this in top five okay who can get a visit and then i go through and see Hopefully you have a team that has visits before week five. And that's where I recommend if you are doing a offline league and you can't control these things, try to make some of your home games before week five. It really screws you when the CPU generated schedule puts all your home games after like week 10 or gives you no home games. It does make it, it's kind of unfair to recruit that way, but stop neglecting visits. Everyone's like, they don't matter. Visits are so good now that you can schedule a visit against the, what is that? South Alabama right there, USA. And you could schedule that. And you could win as LSU with three red triangles, right? Three red triangles. And you can get a huge boost and probably get an auto commit right on that week. That is how good it is. Recruiting and visits are so hand in hand tandem now. Do not forget to do your visits. Now people comment, but they're so expensive. Then I gotta lose, I gotta lose out on prospects. That's why when I make my when I make my board, I do about five to twelve players I absolutely want. Cause in reality, you shouldn't be recruiting 20 to 30 players every year. I do five to twelve. That depends on the size of your school. Like five stars, four star mix of who I absolutely want. Typically with a bigger program, five stars. With a smaller, you're probably looking more four stars. But I I put my five to twelve guys and I'm willing to cut everyone else out. So I'll start recruiting like 18. And then when visit week opens up, if I see four guys that I want to put a visit on, I'll start cutting weight. I'll cut that four star. I don't need them. I'll pull, I'll pull hours off and I'll go back down to 12. And then around week five or six, when I when I commit these guys. Or, or sooner, I then go back and start re-going back on some of these four stars. I end up losing a lot of them, but what matters more is you get your key guys in there, not the other guys that may just be depth. So make sure you're doing your visits. They are so OP now. People are asking bye week versus regular week. Bye weeks are still good. They're, they're better actually now, right? They're better because now visits have gotten better. But honestly, I'm at a point where I think it's so impactful just to do it on a week like this, on a week where you know you're gonna win because it's still better than a bye week, but doing it against an actual opponent, like a, like a, a real team, not doesn't mean user or CPU, but a real team is super crazy right now. And if you do it against a team like Alabama or Oklahoma, it's crazy. Now, do I recommend doing that if you're not the best user or you don't win that many games? No, because you're still gonna get bonus, but it won't be crazy. I'd rather get a guaranteed win against one of these teams right now. Now, if you need a huge comeback or you, need, you, you have no chance competing, you can go ahead and pick one of those teams if you wanna try to do it. But visits are so good. Just schedule them they could be they could be altered at a certain point but that remains to be seen and the last thing stop scheduling visits after week five ish now there is one caveat to this some recruiting processes start later so let's say you get to week five and people start committing there might be a few four stars that went up recruited and you might start new recruiting battles in week five you may be on a player that's not even in the top eight yet in week five those players ignore this advice obviously and you should understand that because technically for them they're week five if you start in week five their week five is really week 10. So process that accordingly. But basically from the moment you start a full-fledged 50 to 80 point recruiting process, you should not schedule visits five weeks out from that. And I'm gonna tell you why. Look at this guy right here. We are in one advance, we'll probably be in the top three. We are going to be committing by UCLA week, probably at the latest. So I see people come in here and they're like, okay, I'm gonna go on my board and I'm gonna cut this guy to get back some points so I can get this guy on a visit and I'm gonna do, I don't really want the Ole Miss. I'm gonna do Ole Miss, I'm gonna lock it in. So you lock it in and then I see them lose. So they just lost the recruit, but that guy's committing before that. And even worse is that sometimes, so there's some battles where it might go to week six or week seven, but what you don't realize is you need this visit to actually win it and you're outside the top five. So by week five, when the guy narrows it down to his top three, you actually get locked out. So your visit's irrelevant. So first be monitoring where you stand. So right now, let's say for Oregon, let's say they placed the visit last week for week five they're not even close in here. You might lose that visit right off rip. And then you look at me, I have a visit for week seven. If the team below me puts a visit on like week four, they probably jump me. And to make it worse, my week seven visits never coming. I lost a bunch of guys like this and not because I did them too late, but because now how good they are, you need to get them in the top five. You can't risk a week five or six. You really need like weeks two through four are prime visit weeks, especially in an online league. So make sure you are doing that. Don't skimp on visits. Don't poorly use the visits like that i see people say it's a waste I, you know it never happened do them early but guys that's about it for the video if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button let's hit 30k we're so close can we get a last minute push here comment down below if you have anything else to add to this list of course as always can we get 500 likes in the video and if you haven't already check out underdog they're doing great things you do not want to miss it. it it underdog is having is having a year right now go check it out my code will be down below sign up with it helps me out and get you guys free money on the match as well as a free pick which like i said is basically free money definitely check it out if you need any help with it or to see any of the picks i do i do post them on the community tab as well as over on twitter so follow me there as well thank you guys for watching i'm out peace